What can a tiny fossil tooth measuring just a few millimeters tell us about the origin and evolution of primates in the Americas? Welcome to another exciting episode of Beastopilosis, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. Primates are distributed across the globe, and if you exclude humans, most primates today live in tropical climates. In the Americas, primates live in Central and South America, although there's a rich fossil record of primates from North America. But as the climate cooled during the later half of the Cenozoic, primates vanished from North America near the end of the Eocene, around 34 million years ago with a few uh, questionable groups lingering until uh, the Ligocene around 30 million years ago. In South and Central America, primates did not make their appearance until uh, much later, in late Oligocene, around 26 million years ago, at a site near Sala, Bolivia. Two of the earliest South American monkeys are known, Branciella and Zeletivius. These two small monkeys are placed within all other living South American monkeys, the platyrines, which form a sister group to African monkeys, the catarines. Together, the platyrines and catarines are placed within the anthropoids, a group we commonly call the monkeys. Although within the catarines are the apes, which differ from other anthropoids in lacking a tail, we as humans fall into the catarine clade, or branch of primates, and more specifically within apes, with gibbons, gorillas, and chimps. But the question paleontologists have been asking for centuries is, how did the South American monkeys, platyrines, originate in South America? South America was split off from, the North, Amer from North America throughout most of the last 66 million years. There's some evidence of a possible connection between North America and South America during the age of the dinosaurs, but throughout most of the Cenozoic, South and North America were separated by an ocean. The Isthmus of Panama formed only around uh, 3 million years ago. This land bridge allowed for the first time in 66 million years an exchange of animals between the continents. There are two possible scenarios for the origin of platyrines in South America in the Oligocene. One is that they originated from a population of North American primates who somehow survived and rafted across that ocean sometime during the late Eocene before North American primates went extinct. In fact, some of the last occurring primates in North America are known from southern locations on the continent, including Texas, during the late Eocene. Could one of these species made it to South America? Hmm. The second scenario is that a population of African primates rafted across the Atlantic Ocean and arrived in South America during this time. This was a further distance to travel, but there are some morphological similarities between fossil platyrines in South America and fossils known in Africa from the late Eocene and Oligocene, suggesting some similarities. For example, let's take a look at the similarities between the South American teeth of Branzilia and the African teeth of Britella from the late Eocene of Egypt. They almost look like they belong in the same mouth, despite being found a world apart from each other. Branciella being several million years younger. Both fossils have an extra cusp posterior on the molars called a hypocone. A hypocone is also found in other primates from the Eocene of North America, including a group called the Adapids, which appear to have formed an extra cusp, the hypocone, without incorporating the outer shelf of the tooth, the cingulum. So this indicates that the hypocone in North America and Adapids is an example of convergent evolution, or what scientists call homoplasy. In another group of North American Eocene primates, the Olomides, the hypocone is also found in the last few members of the group, including the late Eocene Runei and Dizolemur from Texas. Some have suggested that there was, um, there was these groups that actually made that trip to South America as this hypocone seems to have formed from incorporating the outer shelf of the tooth, the cingulum as well. In early 2015, a tiny 
tiny little new tooth was found from the late Eocene of the, on the banks of the Ura River in Peru. It's an upper molar tooth, but unlike the other South American primates, it lacks a hypocone. However, given its shape, there are a number of traits that identify it as a primate tooth. In fact, the tooth closely resembles a number of other primate teeth more distantly related to monkeys, known both in Africa and North America, including the Oomamide primates in North America and some recent primate discoveries from North Africa. And both of these groups lack a hypocone and closely resemble this odd little tooth. Oomamides are well known in North America and also in Asia, and they're closely related to tarsiers, these weird, bug-eyed, nocturnal primates living in Southeast Asia. Oomamides are often included within a branch called the tarsiiforms because of the similarity. They lack a hypocone, however, unlike the new tooth from South America, the shelf on the tooth, the cingulum, does not extend all the way around the on the tongue side of the tooth. In North Africa, there's a few fragmentary teeth that appear um, more closely related to this tooth, including another primate only known from a single tiny tooth, Talithpithecus from Libya. It lacks a hypocone, but unlike other North American uh, omomides, it has a cingulum that extends all the way around the tongue side of the tooth. It also features these outer cusps, um, the metacone and the pericone, that are positioned toward the, the cheek side with no other cusps present. And uh, these two teeth on opposite side of the planet really closely resemble each other. In comparing this tiny little South American tooth to more completely known fossils, there are some similarities with African fossil primates, uh, Catapithecus, which contains a small hypocone extending off the cingulum of the upper molars, like that found both in Africa and South American monkeys. In fact, Catapithecus often groups more with South American platyrrhine primates than with other African catarrhines. The new tooth from South America introduces more questions about the evolution of South American monkeys. Did the hypocone evolve multiple times both in Africa and South America? Or was there a larger interchange of African and South American primates? If this tooth lacks a hypocone, could it be more closely related to hypocone lacking omomyids from North America? If so, why does it look so similar to fossils from North Africa instead? Are these traits also convergent? Fossils only known from a single tooth are really frustrating. They open many more questions and leave us hoping for more material that will be discovered in our lifetimes. And this little tooth was at one point attached to a little primitive South American monkey. And until we find more of this intriguing fossil, we just have to keep having a conjecture on its weird occurrence in the deep Amazon jungle of South America. Thank you for watching, and I've listed various scientific papers below in the description if you'd like to learn more about this bizarre, mysterious tooth and more about other early fossil primates. Thanks for listening.